Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA a certification training course on troubleshooting processors. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of 220.702, Section 1.2, where we're going to be detecting problems. We're going to be providing troubleshooting efforts towards our processors. Let's start with a concept of troubleshooting processors and CPUs and learn more about what we really should be looking for. Of course, CPUs don't actually have moving parts. They're solid state technology. This becomes a little more difficult. You can't really pick up the top of your computer and look inside of it and try to determine, is there something not connecting to something else? Is there a cable missing? Is there a wire that's not connected? It's all a self-contained system becomes a little bit more of a challenge. So you usually install a processor, and it usually works or it usually doesn't. You know pretty quick whether your installation went properly or not. If it didn't go properly, you can listen, and your computer is usually beeping at you. Because it doesn't have a processor that's working, it can't do a lot of processing for you. Your BIOS is really there to let you know that you didn't install something quite right. You should also check the connection. So make sure that you have put it properly into where it needs to go. Some processors have slots. Some have other types of sockets on the motherboard. Just make sure that it's installed the way we would expect. And ultimately, you could even burn in the CPU. You've bought a brand new processor. You put it into a computer. Maybe you'd like to run it overnight, but you'd really like to crank a lot of different processes through there, send a lot of cycles into that, what we call a burn-in process. Let it really start calculating a lot of things over that 24-hour period. And you can there's a great CPU burn-in program. Go to CPUburnin.com, and it'll sit there and run a great CPU test for as long as you'd like. And it can enable or disable the error checking. Sometimes you'd like to disable the error checking, get a lot of heat going there, make sure you're really cranking up the cycles and really put that CPU through a lot of stress to make sure later on that it's going to run perfectly fine. As we've mentioned before in this course, managing the heat inside of your computer case or inside of your laptop computer is a challenge. You need to make sure that you are not overheating the system. The hotter it gets inside of a computer, the more problems you're going to have with a component failing. And you'll certainly lower the overall lifespan of the electronic components inside of your devices. The challenge, of course, is there's not a real easy way to put a thermometer inside of your computer or try to, to put some type of probe kind of stuck in the middle and have a, a screen that you could see what's going on. Now, fortunately, though, there are a number of built-in thermostats, a number of built-in sensors in the components that you probably already have in your computer. Because these have already built-in capabilities, we can just use a piece of software to be able to know do we see the temperatures of these devices? This is one that I use called from a CPU ID called Hardware Monitor, hwmonitor.php on the cpuid.com website. This is, hardware monitor goes through a lot of different sources to be able to gather information. In this case, I have a, uh, some sensors that are part of the computer itself via ACPI. We'll talk about that in another video. We've also got some sensors in our processors themselves. I've got some sensors in my video card. And I've also got sensors inside of my hard drives. So a lot of these components, they just come with that capability. And this program is able to go to each one of those and gather information. It will monitor this over a period of time. I can see uh, what the value is currently. I can see the minimum value that has been on that system and the maximum value. So you're able to get a feel of how things are running right now. For instance, uh, the temperature of my cores of my processor has gone all the way up to 74 degrees centigrade. That's 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So these get really, really hot. And you can see it goes been down to 139 is what, it running, what it's running right now. And it's been down to 116 since I started monitoring this with the hardware monitor. Look how hot the video card gets, 202 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, currently running at 188. Our video cards these days have a lot of cycles going through them. They are workhorses. So you can see that the processors on those devices also get very hot. If you are working inside of your system, you just turned it off, and you're now opening the case, and you're working on something, this is why we tell you be very careful about touching things, because it gets really, really hot in there. And with those temperature values, it can become very easy to burn yourself just by inadvertently moving your hand onto one of these processors or the heat sinks that are on top of these processors. 
During the troubleshooting process for your processor, you may want to get more information about what exactly is on your computer. But if you've ever opened up a computer and looked at the processor, you can't see anything, most often because there is a heat sink and probably even a fan on top of that heat sink. There's no way to look at the information on top of the chip. You can't read any of the values that are there. Fortunately, our modern CPUs have built into them a way to let you know what exactly that is. And if you have the right software, they can give you everything you need to know about that processor, even if you can't read the top of the chip itself. Again, that's CPUID.com. There's another program called CPUZ.php. That's the page you can go to. CPUZ, as the name implies, gives you a lot of information about many things inside of your computer, including the CPU. If you recall from our memory troubleshooting video, we use this to look at the memory that's in our system. It has just as valuable information on a CPU. CPU. We can see exactly the type of processor we have in there. I know the package that it uses. I know the technology. I can see specifications on it, the different family and stepping and model numbers, and some clock information and cache information. So I'm pretty clear at this point. Inside this computer, I know exactly what type of processor is in there. In this case, it's a laptop computer. I would not have been able to open this up and reasonably be able to find the processor and look at it anyway. So I just load up a piece of software, and I can see everything I need to see. At this point, I can go to the manufacturer's website. This is an Intel Core 2 Duo T7600. So now I can go to the Intel website and look up that specific model and gather a lot of information about what I should expect, what I should expect this operationally. And then I could look to see what type of temperature value should I see on this, and how could I perhaps get some tests that I could run across this processor and make sure it's operating the way I would expect. Expect. All of this coming from the simple CPU-Z program. It's great utility. Let's do some Q&A with our processor troubleshooting. Our first question is, how can you stress test a CPU? There is a need to be able, especially when you first install a CPU, to really put it through its paces and make sure it's operating properly. That stress test can usually be done using some burn-in software that we could run over a certain amount of time and see if it's really going to stand up to a lot of use. Our second question is, how can you determine the FSB speed? That, of course, stands for front side bus. And if we don't know what our processor is using today, we may just want to run a program that can pro provide us with the information about what the CPU is using for front side bus speed. We used some of the CPU processor information software earlier in this presentation to be able to provide that. And lastly, how can you determine if your processor cooling system is working properly? Well, one way to tell is to be monitoring all the time what this temperature is inside of your computer, from your CPU, from your hard drive, and from the other components that are inside of your computer to see if maybe you need to add some additional cooling or change the way that you're cooling your computer today. That covers our requirements for our 227.02 section 1.2, where we needed to know what we can do to help detect problems and troubleshoot the processors inside of our computers. If you'd like to watch many of our other free a videos, participate in our message board, send me an email, or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.